Hi, I'm Lisa Rubel from Love to Color My World. This is the third tutorial in my Pillow Talk series featuring Benertex fabric and some unique pillow designs. Today I'm working with these bright liftoff fabrics from Canvas, part of Benertex Studios. And we've got a bunch of bright different colors, rocket ships, stars, astronauts. And I'm gonna use these to make a puff pillow. This is going to be a big floor pillow that you can lay on while watching TV, playing games, perfect for uh, the kids to hang out with. So let's get started. So let's talk about what materials we need to make a puff pillow. I'm going to use five different fabrics on the front for my puff squares, and I've got a fat quarter of each, and we're going to be cutting five, five and a half squares from each of those fat quarters. Then I've got a yard of backing fabric. I've got this fun overall print, which will make a cool back. You'll also need one third yard of binding fabric and then two thirds yard of muslin. From that, we're going to be cutting five inch squares to back each of our little puff squares. So to create the puff, I'm gonna lay down a muslin square and align the bigger print square with two of the edges of the muslin square. And if you want to pin, put a pin in at the corner. And then what I do is line up the next corner down at the bottom and then use that sort of bubble in the middle and create a pleat. And eyeball it so that it ends up roughly in the center of this side. And then I'm going to put another pin in at the corner. And then I'm going to turn it and do the same thing. Line up my print corner with my muslin and fold this little fabric bubble over to make a pleat and pin it. And then put a pin in the corner as well and rotate it one more time and align my corners. Fold a pleat in the center and pin that. There we go. And then what I'll do using a scant quarter inch seam allowance is sew along all three of my pinned sides. We're going to leave this side open for stuffing the fiber fill into, but you want to sew with a scant quarter inch around those three sides. So you can sew down the one side leave the needle in, but lift your foot up and then uh, rotate it and then go again and then do the same thing. Leave the needle up, le needle down, foot up, and then rotate it a third time. With that scant quarter inch seam allowance, you'll connect your muslin square to your print square and also secure those little pleats in place. Now, I like to do this chain piecing, so I'll sew a bunch of them at once, go around all three sides, slide the next one under and go. You may find too that as you start to do this, you get into a rhythm with the pleating and you don't even need to use pins and you can just create the pleat as you line it up under your sewing machine. So whatever feels most comfortable to you. We're gonna make 25 of these little puff pockets, five in each of the five different prints. So once you have all 25 of your little puff pockets made, then it's going to be time to start assembling them into rows and we'll do that before we stuff them because it will just make it easier to stitch them when they're not stuffed. So what you need to do is decide on your design and then lay out your squares into five rows of five but the key is to make sure that your open end of each puff pocket is facing the same direction. So let's take a look at my layout. So I'm going to lay out my design I'm going to start with a light blue and then the blue rocket ship and the green and the blue star and then lastly the black rockets. And I've got all of my open edges facing down and then I'm going to start my next row. I'm going to go black. and then aqua and blue, green, and then the star. 
And for my third row, I'm going to start with the star and then black. And in each row, I have all my openings towards the bottom. So keep an eye on that. Aqua and the blue rockets. And then the green squares. So I'm going to lay out my next two rows the same way. So now that I've got my design set, you can see my fabrics, my squares go on in a diagonal line all the way across. That's the pattern that I've chosen to use. Now I'm going to start sewing the little puff pockets into a row. And now what you want to pay attention to here, so I'm going to sew them right sides together through all the layers. And you want to make sure that your stitch line is inside that basted line that we did for attaching the muslin to the back. And that's why we did the scant quarter inch seam there so that we could sew a regular quarter inch seam. And when we flip it open, you won't see that stitch line from the front. So start joining your squares into rows, always making sure that your original stitch line is within the seam allowance of your new stitching line. I've got five rows of puff pockets all assembled and for each of them I've got my open edge along the bottom. So for pressing these you want to press one row to the left and the next row to the right and then left and right and left again and that way our seams can nest. Now the great thing because these end up dimensional it's very forgiving so if you don't end up matching up perfectly with the little poof in there, you're not going to be able to see that your seams don't come together exactly, which is really nice. So now we get to the fun part where we get to put the uh, fiber fill into our pockets. So I've got a bag here I'm going to get started with. And you actually put in less than you would expect um, because the pockets are not huge and all together it will have a cumulative effect. So put in what would fit in your hand or maybe even a little less. And then for each one of those, I'm gonna flip it around. We're gonna pin that last pleat in. So you're gonna create the pleat. Make sure you're not also pleating the muslin underneath. And get a whole row filled. So about the same amount. I'm gonna tuck it in. The more that you put in, the poofier your final pillow will be, but it also, the more that you put in, it's a little more of a challenge as you go to sew things together. And a little dimension goes a long way. So I'm gonna do this for the entire row. And again, each time making sure that you're not also pleating the muslin. You want to make sure the muslin lies flat underneath your print square. And try to grab a pretty consistent uh, amount of fiber fill for each pocket so that all of your little puff pockets are relatively the same, uh, you know, the same amount of stuffedness. Okay, last one. And then after I finish this one, my next step is going to be to stitch down these open edges, again with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So you're basically replicating what you did around the other three sides. So we'll stitch off this row. And then once all the rows have been stuffed and filled, then we'll join the rows together to get our pillow top. So stuff your first row, put in your pleats and pin them, and then very carefully stitch with a scant quarter inch seam allowance to close up all those open edges. And do that for each of your five rows, and then we'll work on assembling our rows. So I've got all five of my rows closed up, and I just love how squishy and squishy these puff rows are. It's gonna be great to get the whole pillow together. So now we're going to be joining these rows, and this is where it starts to get harder because the more layers of dimensional puff that you put together, the harder it is to get it under your sewing machine. 
So I am going to take, move these three rows out of the way and take my first two rows, double check that my design is right. I've got everything going on a diagonal. And I'm gonna flip this top one over and match up the seams between each of my little puff squares and put a pin in there. And like I said, because the finished product will be so dimensional, if you don't end up with your seams aligned exactly, it's very forgiving. You won't be able to see that because it'll be tucked down in between all of your puffs. I'm gonna put another one at the end and then I'm actually gonna go back through and put another pin in the middle of each uh, pair of squares. So you wanna try to squish the fiber fill as far away from the edge where you'll be sewing as you can, just to make it easier to get it all under the, the sewing machine foot. And same thing, since we have a, a scant quarter inch seam allowance from closing up our pocket, so now when we're sewing this together, you're gonna sew with a full quarter inch, or even if you need to, a little bit more, so that you end up uh, to the left of your existing seam line so they won't show when we open this back up. So here are my first two rows. And just like I said, you know, it's hard to see exactly where your uh, four squares come together, but doesn't that just look so cozy and inviting? So now I'm gonna sew rows three and four together to make another unit like this, and then add the fifth row and sew this on as well, and the top will be done. So I've got the top of my puff pillow all assembled. It's so squishy. And now it's just time to make this into an actual pillow. So I'm gonna set my puff quilt top aside and I'm gonna do an envelope backing for my pillow. And so I've got two backing pieces that are 18 inches by 24 inches. And I'm going to take the long edge of each of those two pieces and press it over a quarter inch and then a second quarter inch to make a finished edge and then top stitch down that edge and do that for both. And then we'll go uh, assemble the pillow front and back. Okay. So we're going to join our pillow backing to our pillow front uh, and then we will bind the edge, which will give it a little stability and then also just create a nice finished look. So we've got our two backing pieces for our envelope style back. What I did was to measure the size of my pillow top and overlap my two backing pieces to create a square of that size. Now we're gonna start out, you wanna aim for about 24 inches square, but depending on what your seam allowances were as you joined these puffs together, you might end up needing to trim it a little bit. So when I found the correct size and arranged the two overlapping pieces to be that length as well, I went ahead and pinned where the fabrics overlap so that they would uh, stay together. So what I'm going to do now is put my pillow top on top. And if it looks like it's still a little big, that's because you can pull on these puffs and that will help to spread it out a little bit. So you can do that as you pin. So I'm going to pin all the way around, matching the raw edges on all four sides. And after I'm done doing that, then I'm going to stitch all the way around with a uh, scant quarter inch seam allowance. And so basically just following the stitch lines that are already there, and then we'll add the binding in the last step. So again, make sure that your the wrong side of your backing is face up of both pieces, and then the wrong side of your pillow top is face down, and then pin and stitch all the way around. So I've got my pillow back and front attached together. I've got this nice envelope to stuff my pillow insert in. And the only thing left to do is to cover up the raw edges all the way around. So I've created a binding strip using three two and a quarter inch by width of fabric strips. And what I'm gonna do for this 
is I'm actually going to stitch it onto the back side of my pillow. So I'm going to align the raw edges of my folded binding strip with the raw edges of the quilt. I'm sorry, of the pillow. And then I'm going to stitch it on just like you would typically on, on the front. Miter the corners in the same way and work all the way around. And once the binding is attached to this back side, what we'll do is press and uh, fold and press it around to the front. And then we can top stitch that edge down and just create a really nice finished edge there. So add your binding to the back and then we'll look at how to top stitch it down on the front. So once you have your binding stitched to the back side of your pillow, what you want to do is press the binding towards the front and then press it on the front. And I'm using binding clips to hold it in place. And you miter the corners just like you would if you were pressing the binding, the folded binding piece to the back. And so I've got mine just about done. I'm going to do this last corner. And the more you press this, it's a little hard with all of the puff, but the more that you press your binding, the flatter it will lay. So now what I'm going to do is stitch my binding down, top stitch it uh, as close to that folded edge of the binding as I can get all the way around and that will uh, secure my binding and then I can put my pillow insert in and see how my finished pillow looks. And here's my finished pillow. I stuffed my insert into it. I've got all this lovely poof on the front with these fun spaceship fabrics from the Liftoff collection. So I hope you enjoyed this puff pillow tutorial. And if you make one as well, I hope you'll share a picture of it on Instagram and tag the Pillow Talk series in it. And I'd like to say thank you to Benertex for the fabric used for this Pillow Talk pillow, our puff pillow. And if you've missed the other two Pillow Talk projects I've done, make sure that you check them out on YouTube.